Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel. Welcome to bonus weather video. Let's see, I guess I haven't technically done one this week, so I guess I'll call it one uh, for this week. And uh, I'm still on the road uh, on my way back to Myrtle Beach. I'm actually doing this from a little town called Princeton, West Virginia, between Bluefield and Beckley. So if you know where that is, that gives you some ideas of where I am. Uh, but the video today is more of a commentary than it is uh, uh, education in terms of science or anything. And it has to do with my opinion, my opinion only, on uh, severe weather outlooks and how they are or how they can be misinterpreted and how I think certain segments of the media can uh, be very misleading and make things look way more dire than they actually are in some cases. Um, now, the fortunate thing for me is in all the years that I was at WRAL, uh, we tried our hardest not to do this, okay? Uh, but I see it happen in a lot of other places, radio, TV, and social media. And uh, the one thing that really gripes me is some of these morning shows, the, the national morning shows, that will say something like, 10 million people are under a severe weather alert today. Well, it makes it sound like 10 million people are gonna die, okay? And we all know that's not the case, all right? Thankfully. So, uh, in light of that fact, I wanted to talk about what these outlooks actually mean and uh, and then tell you what I, what I think is the recommended uh, uh, behavior uh, in response to them. And, um, and then, you know, you can either agree with me or disagree with me and, or whatever. So there are five levels of alerts that the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma puts out. Uh, there is marginal, which is the one that North Carolina is in for tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, then it goes up to slight and then enhanced and then moderate and then high, okay? Now, the level one, which we're in for tomorrow, is anywhere from a two to 5% chance of a tornado, a damaging wind gust of 58 miles per hour or higher, or one inch diameter hail. A two to 5% chance of those things happening within 25 miles of a point, which means that the threat of it happening right over top of any given point is infinitely less than that, okay? Um, now, the highest risk, the high risk, uh, and that is defined as a 60% chance of a tornado damaging winds or one inch diameter hail occurring within 25 miles of a point. So that is slightly better than flipping a coin of uh, chance of something occurring within 25 miles of a point, which again means that the chance of it happening over a given point is infinitely less than 60%, okay? Now, am I suggesting that you totally ignore these outlooks even when it's in the high category? No, not saying that, okay? I'm just saying that it is not an unequivocal death sentence for everybody uh, that is in that outlook area, okay? In fact, when you break it down, even the biggest severe weather outbreaks in the history of this country, if you actually break it down by geography, uh, the majority of locations do not get the really, really bad stuff, okay? However, here's the thing. I came up with a definition several years ago, and, and this is the way I describe it, is that there are such things as low probability, high impact events, which means the chance of it being over top of you may not be all that great, but if it happens, you could lose your property or your life or both, okay? And neither one of those are good things, obviously. So my recommendation is that if an alert is issued, an outlook, and, and even if it's marginal, there's always a chance that there's gonna be one isolated occurrence of something bad. So what you do is, is that you make a plan, okay? And hopefully you know what the safest place in your house is. It's always like a basement or the lowest floor and the uh, most interior room of your house. And if you work in a building, uh, I'm sure that every, just about every company now has these severe weather drills where they tell everybody what to do and where to go. Um, and so you come up with that plan. You, you take a few minutes and think about if the worst happens, this is what I'm gonna do. 
And then once you have that information tucked away in your mind, then go on about your day the way you go about any other day. Because if this, you know, relatively low probability event happens, you already know exactly what you're going to do. Now, let's say that a tornado warning is issued for where you are, even at your workplace or at home or whatever. And you go down to your basement or get in your interior closet on the lowest floor and you stay there for 20 minutes and then you get the all clear that the tornado warning has expired. Do not be mad, be thankful, okay? You might be tempted to think, gosh, I've heard this so many times before, I wasted another 20 minutes of my life and I'm really getting tired of this and the next time I'm gonna blow it off, okay? Don't do that. I guarantee you there are a lot of people in different places, different parts of the world that would love to trade their problems for you, quote unquote, wasting 20 minutes of your life. Okay, so again, if this happens and nothing happens where you are, don't be mad, be thankful. And the next time a warning is issued, ex execute your plan. And again, if nothing happens, don't be mad, be thankful, okay? Uh, if something terrible happens and you're not ready for it, then it may not, or, or let, let's put it this way. If something bad happens and you are ready for it, it may not save your property, but it would save your life. And the property can be replaced, but the life can't, obviously. So again, breaking all this down and coming up with a final conclusion is that my recommendation is be vigilant. You know, if you're in an outlook area, just keep a cautious eye to the sky, keep up with your favorite source of weather information in terms of any warnings that might be issued. If a warning is issued for your area, remember that it's not an unequivocal death sentence, but just exercise your plan and go through it. And if something bad does happen, you've given yourself the best chance to survive. And if nothing does happen, then all you've done is given up 20 minutes of your life to make sure that you come out of this thing okay. And in my mind, that is not all that big of a sacrifice. All right, I hope that makes sense. That is the bonus weather video for this Wednesday. Uh, I will do another one at the very least on Friday and maybe do one tomorrow to make up for the one that I missed on Monday. So we'll, we'll see how all this goes. Uh, but in the meantime, hope you have a great Wednesday evening and we will talk to you again tomorrow with the daily weather update and maybe a bonus video. All right, take care, everybody. See you later.